Hello guys, my name is Tom and in this video I want to show you how I created this uh, kind of a mystical fairy tale like forest scene. And it's actually very simple to do, it doesn't require much time or uh, a lot of equipment. So uh, first obviously you're going to need uh, your actor, actor, actress, um, so in this case this was just for like a little proof of concept test I was doing, uh, so I asked my wife if she could uh, be my actress in here. Now next thing you're going to need is obviously your location, so I was going uh, for this kind of a thick, kind of a dark, mysterious uh, but a little bit kind of a magical look, look of, a, of a forest. By the way, I'm shooting this whole scene on the Blackmagic Packet Cinema 4K camera with a 50mm lens set at f2.8. And now before I jump in and do the breakdown of all the lighting and the post-production, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. In case you didn't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 25,000 classes in all sorts of uh, topics, uh, such as um, the videos that I put out up here on YouTube. So if you want to learn about filmmaking, good cinematography, or you know even After Effects and things like that, uh, you can find all of that and a lot more on Skillshare. Uh, with the premium membership, you will get unlimited access so you can join all of their classes and communities uh, and kind of achieve the goals that are right for you. And also, most importantly, they're very affordable. If you get the annual subscription, it's actually less than $10 a month. So join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare already. Uh, if just follow the links in the description of my video to get first two months free. So when it comes to the lighting, it's actually pretty simple. There's just three light sources and the first and the main, I would say the, the key light of the scene is the lantern. So it's an actual practical or physical light uh, that uh, our actress is holding. And this is actually one of those old traditional oil lanterns. So it's a nice big flame and it's fairly bright. Now, obviously, if I were to use just that light, as you can see, uh, it kind of doesn't really give you a sense of the location. It, it does illuminate, you know, our actress here, or at least just her face, but it's it's very dramatic. Basically, you, you don't have a sense of where she is. I mean, this might as well have been even filmed inside of a dark studio or something, because uh, you really can't tell, you know, what's what the, the environment is. So the next light that I set up is uh, what's kind of, I would call it, a, a, as a kind of a fake moonlight. Uh, and really a moonlight when you're doing these kind of uh, night scenes uh, is, is uh, going to be a strong light, so very kind of sharp, you know, doesn't have any soft shadows or anything like that. And you want that light to be uh, almost completely backlighting your scene. So it kind of provides this uh, nice and very subtle, I would say, edge light. You do not ever want to have that light from, from the side or, you know, completely from the, the point of view of the camera. Uh, because the point of this light is you want to position it in such a way that A, it's not visible obviously in your shot, but also so that it still keeps most of the scene dark, but it just highlights the edges of your set, in this case, you know, of these kind of trees there in the bushes, and also of, of your actors, so that this way it kind of gives you a sense of depth, uh, and it lets you sort of identify, you know, what the location is. Now, obviously, if I wanted the scene to be very dramatic, I could have just left it like this with these two lights. Uh, but because I'm kind of going for a little bit less of this dramatic kind of a scary dark scene, I kind of want it to be, again, kind of like a like a fairy tale, like almost forest feeling. Uh, I did want to be able to see, most importantly, our actress's uh, right side there or camera right side uh, of her face. Uh, and also wanted to see a little bit more detail there in those in those trees and, and, and the foliage there. So that's why I end up placing another big light, and this one is the is this big aperture light. It's 120D Mark II uh, with this nice big aperture softbox, and I placed that actually all the way to the kind of to the right side of the camera, the actress's left side, you could say. Now just keep in mind that that light is very very dim. I, I think I had it at, like at the minimum settings, versus our m moonlight. Uh, uh, which was also another aperture light, but this was the light, light storm kind of a panel light. Um, that one had no diffusion on it, and it was set to uh, of around 60% of its you know, maximum brightness. So it was fairly bright, uh, considering it that again, I had to kind of match the brightness of all of these lights to, to be not too strong, but then again, not too weak in comparison to our key light, which is the lantern, which that one, you did, basically I didn't have much control over how bright I wanted that light. 
and that's another tip I'll give you guys whenever you're working with practicals, like in this case, you know, which, whether it's a flame, like a, let's say a, a candle light, or in this case, a lantern, uh, always first set your camera's exposure so that your practicals look good. And then with all these other professional movie lights, you can obviously dim them and adjust them accordingly so that they look, you know, they have just the right brightness in comparison to your practicals. Uh, once I had my lighting set up, this is kind of how the, the shot looks. And it's pretty good, but I still felt like I, I needed to add some depth and kind of a little bit more of a mystery to this forest scene. So uh, what I wanted to have is, is something in the foreground, kind of to make it almost feel like the camera itself is kind of behind some trees, you know, and it's again to, to give the forest a little bit more depth. So what I ended up doing is I just took, you know, a branch that I ripped off of one of the trees uh, and I had a, a stand here with kind of a boom arm. And I just attached that uh, that branch to that boom arm and I kind of hanged it in front of the camera uh, like a little bit up so that you can still see it in, in the frame. You can see it there, uh, you know, in the upper portion of the frame. Uh, and it's kind of getting backlit again a little bit by our fake moonlight. Uh, but, you know, again, it's not really too distracting. It doesn't cover the whole scene, but it just gives you a sense of that there's some more kind of foliage, some vegetation where the camera is. Now, one question I often get asked uh, is about uh, how do I go about, for example, lighting a scene when I'm working on a low budget and I'm, again, working in these remote locations. So, uh, obviously, you're going to need some kind of a power source. So, first advice will be to find a location where there is a building or somewhere where you can run cables and, uh, and have power this way. Now, if if you happen to be recording in a location where there is no access to electricity and you need to be able to plug in lights then uh, next best thing I think is to get these uh, solar generators that are now available you can get them on Amazon and and many many places online I'm gonna post the links for these I actually own two of these one is the smaller 400 watt one that's around $300 so pretty cheap and then I have this other one that's massive it's much stronger and can power it can it could have actually powered all of the lights and more that I have in this scene uh, but I just you know in that, in that case I would have had to run cables and connect all the lights to that one solo generator so uh, you know since I had the two of them I kind of you know used the two different ones to, to uh, pl plug in the two different lights a anyways this is how our final shot looks uh, or at least that's how it looks in camera now the next thing obviously I'm, I'm gonna do is uh, I have to add the fireflies as you saw in the final effect now uh, originally the one of the reasons why I picked that location is because there was actually a lot of fireflies there like real ones uh, here is actually one shot that I got like a few days before in at the same location and as you'll see I mean, you know, the, this was shot on ISO 16,000 and you can barely see those fireflies. And they almost look, uh, they just don't look as, I would say, as kind of romantic or, or kind of fairy tale like so what i settled for was a quick uh, effect done in after effects now I, I say that it's a quick effect simply because uh, you know I, I didn't actually end up doing the fireflies completely from from scratch which i could have done in, in after effects but uh, I, I just simply didn't have time for it and i found this really cool uh, preset basically for After Effects called Swarms uh, from creationeffects.com uh, and it's just 49 bucks for this whole bundle it gives you a whole bunch of co really cool presets I, I, not just fireflies but like you know all ty different types of butterflies and other kinds of bugs and mosquitoes and things like that that you can e very quickly add uh, to uh, your your videos so if you want to have let's say this kind of a plague like scene or just swarm of like I said mosquitoes or things like that uh, it's very fast to do like literally for me to set up my scene it took me around two minutes because uh, you basically just open the preset uh, you adjust your kind of your camera angle and also how many of these uh, you know f uh, insects you want so you know I picked the fireflies I, I kind of I think I put in around 50 of them uh, and then you can adjust very quickly using these settings that they have so you just kind of slide you know adjust the the sliders here and you can uh you know adjust the, the the way that they move how fast they're blinking the lights all that kind of stuff you know how erratic their movement is and you can even do it so that they kind of follow this leader uh, just by animating the position of the leader so basically that's all i did you know once i had kind of my my scene figured out how many of these fireflies i wanted uh then i just rendered out the stuff and then i composited it on top of my my scene here 
Uh, now, the one more thing I had to do was to uh, kind of mask out in, in some of the shots some of the fireflies so that they look like they're basically behind uh, that foliage or, or those, you know, that branch that was basically in the foreground of our shot. And again, that was a very quick little masking job. So if you guys want to get that same effect, then go check out uh, creationeffects.com. Uh, they actually have a bunch of other really cool presets like a uh, flock of different birds or schools of different fish and things like that. Like, you know, water life. Uh, re really, really cool stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely want to be checking out some of their other presets because uh, I have a, a few other projects coming up where I think I'm going to find these very useful. Anyways, back in our scene, you know, once we add the fireflies uh, and then I do very quick color grading. I mean, literally all I did is I applied one of my LUTs, which uh, you can find on my website at tomantosfilms.com slash store. And that's it. That, this is our finished scene here. And now I did actually end up getting another close-up shot of our actress here where she's kind of looking around first. Uh, so when you edit it all together, uh, this is how it looks. Definitely a big difference when you compare it to what we kind of originally started with, which was just her and that lantern and literally looked like she was in a in a cave somewhere or something. Um, so anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did and if you want to see more stuff like that, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, also, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video. Now, if you guys want to see a lot more uh, lighting tutorials or After Effects tutorials, all kinds of stuff like that, uh, as always, you can find all of that and a lot more on my website at tomantosfilms.com. And while you're there, uh, subscribe to my newsletter so in the future you're notified uh, when I release new tutorials like that. Anyways, my name is Tom Antos and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!